that this is the end of the talisman unboxing the pack opening the whatever you want to call it of monster hunter rise i think this is a great mechanic i think it's really fun i hope you guys enjoy watching it and let's see what this final one is I am absolutely loving the talisman system in Monster Hunter Rise. Um, I've seen a bunch of people getting really excited about it. The RNG aspect of it is much more engaging than the old decoration aspect in the old Monster Hunter games, or at least in Monster Hunter World. And personally, I find it really fun farming for that god roll. It kind of it hits that box of uh, farming for the right rolls on your weapon, similar to Diablo 3, any of your kind of looter games. Big fan of the new system. Let's check it out. I'm going to do a bit of a talisman opening right now. Enjoy. Okay, okay, so this will be my very first um, time that I have farmed up all 50 talismans for a talisman opening, a full set of melding slots. Um, I have no idea how it's going to turn out, but as you can see, we have uh, 10 times 5 talismans to go. That's 50 whole talismans to go through, and there should be some really, really cool ones in here. I'm super excited. I hope you guys are too. Right, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. 12 of the 50 are rarity 7. The red ones are the ones we're really going to be looking at. The others could still be good. I've had some amazing talismans that are lower rarity than 7. The rarity 5s can even work. The greens and pinks, not so much, but um, the light blues and dark blues can sometimes be some really good talismans too. Um, as you can see, the first one's a Windstorm Talisman, Part Break and Reload Speed. Nothing special for me since I'm a long Longsword main. And most of the Talisman decisions I'll be making will be based around Longsword. Obviously, I'll keep some, some key ones if they look like they'll be good for other builds. But uh, my personal preference will always be Longsword and uh, Longsword related Talismans. So that's number one. Let's go. Diversion and Flinch Free. Diversion is a pretty cool skill. Um, I like that you can draw aggro. Uh, could be pretty handy for party play in potentially arena quests and yeah just for keeping the monster focused on you and not jumping away to attack your cat in the middle of your big combo you know that can be kind of irritating so uh damage is a cool skill this talisman doesn't have great slots flinch free is also not too bad don't think i'll keep it for too long though guard up and water attack no slots total garbage not going to use it if i wanted either of those skills i want more on the talisman so that can go um right Reload speed and dragon resistance. I believe reload speed is very good for bow. It also has two minor talismans or two um, level one talisman slots. They're called level one. Uh, could be pretty good for a bow build. I'm going to keep it, but um, probably not going to use it. Or at least not in any time, any time in the near future. Now this, this is something you want to see. Especially as a longsword main, quick sheath is an amazing skill for longsword. And I really like the look of this. Two levels of quick sheath. I do have a level three quick, she quick sheath on a single talisman. Um, but this is a great, like, if you don't have that yet, if you don't have the perfect talisman, this is a great one for longsword. Perfect, perfect for starting out. I personally just have a better one at this point. Right. Um, blight resistance, affinity sliding, and a level two gem slot. Um, personally, not going to use many of these skills at all. Um, I don't think I'm going to keep this one. Constitution and Guard, both level 1, only a level 1 jewel slot. Probably not going to keep this either. Ooh, Thunder Attack. So I believe there are some pretty cool bow gun builds that you can use Thunder Attack and um, be really successful with. Should probably keep this around because um, Thunder Attack 3 means you can take 3 entire decorations off. Oop, I've skipped on to the next one a bit early. Right. Ice attack. Bombardier. Two level one jewel slots. Nothing special. Gonna skip right over it. Stamina thief. Steadiness. Jewel slot. Gonna skip right over it again. We're about to get into a red one though. So. Diversion. Stun resistance. A level two and a level one slot. Not too bad if you're gonna run stun resistance. Um, it can be pretty handy. Might take the, the pressure off some of your jewel slots. But honestly... The stun resistance only takes up level 1 jewel slots, so um, or decoration slots. I personally don't think I'm going to need this, and that's a bit unlucky because it's a rarity 7. we got another one straight back to back, so high hopes for this one. Are we ready? Are we ready? 
Oh my gosh, I've been disappointed. One level of wide range, one level of water attack. Pretty useless, I'm gonna skip right over. Same deal with this one. Wide range isn't a great skill to be on a, what am I saying? What am I saying? Wide range is a great skill, but the level one gem slot is not enough. Not enough points into wide range and heroics doesn't really get used that much. You could you could definitely get a better skill in that slot. Look, we are looking for some really, really high roll jewels at this point. We're not looking for, for garbage. I, I'm lucky enough to have my build almost complete, so I'm looking for the perfect uh, decorate, I mean, talisman at this point. Right, moving on. Earplugs, heroics, literally nothing special. They're good skills, but don't need them. Level 1 heroics, no jewel slots. This is possibly one of the worst talismans of the entire batch. <laughs> not gonna lie. Skipping right over, diversion and wide range, we're getting these skills a lot, interestingly enough, today. Um, level 2 jewel slot could be handy, probably not going to use this one though. Resuscitate, no jewel slots. Resuscitate's an interesting one, and I quite liked using it in world now and then with some of my bolts. Don't think I'm going to be using it anytime soon though, probably not interested. Gonna give it away. Ooh. Flinch free and speed sharpening. I could see this fitting into a bolt here and there. Maybe not the best, definitely doesn't have the jewel slots that you want to see, but um, it, it could find some use. Speed sharpening is obviously really handy. Um, I can think of a lot of places where getting a quick sharpen off is uh, quite important. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm going to keep that one around just in case. Wirebug Whisperer, Thunder Resistance, level 2 jewel slot. Nothing special, could get that uh, in a number of ways that don't require to take up my talisman slot. Bubbly Dance. Bubbly Dance is a pretty cool ability, um, it really helps out with fighting Mizutsuna in the first place, but also just um, allows for kind of a fun build, adds a little bit of um, adaptability, something a bit different to try, probably not a top tier build, but definitely kind of a, a good build can be made with this, so might keep that around to check out whether, whether I can make a Bubbly Dance build for the fun of it. Steadiness, Windproof, two gem slots, nothing special, don't need it at all. Alright, moving into some reds, we've got almost got four back to back. There's one little pink one in the middle, but uh, let's check out these red ones. Blast resistance, free meal, and a level three gem slot. The revel level three gem slot is really nice. Uh, I could see this being used when we're up against some kind of a crazy blast monster. Um, probably not going to see any use right now, but later on when, when we get some updates... We, we might want to use that. We really might want to use that. So uh, I don't think I'll sleep on it quite yet. Botanist, Ice Resistance, two level two jewel slots. Those jewel slots are really nice. I just wish the skills had been a bit better. Nothing special, not going to keep it. No jewel slots, Dragon Attack, Poison Attack. Meh, don't need it. Um, at, when are you ever going to use two different elemental attacks on one build, right? Sorry, I skipped ahead there. Blast Attack. Evade Extender and a Jewel Slot. Now, this one I really like. Evade Extender can be a lot of fun. Blast Attack could be great on the... Um, uh, Magnamolia? Is his name Magnamolia? How have I forgotten this? Hang on a second. What is he called? Major cover monster? Magnamolo. Okay, not Magnamolio. Yeah. Magnamolo. I, I've known that. I've known that. And then, like, you press the record button and you just can't think anymore. Really scary when you're a new YouTuber, by the way. Um, right, so this could work amazingly with the Magnamolo longsword. I think I'm going to try this out when I make the blast longsword build. Um, very excited for this one, and it'll take a lot of the burden off of having Naga Kuga parts for that evade extender, I mean, um, armor pieces, and having blast attack gems so I can put other gems in. Really nice, really happy with it, and we'll save a bunch of deco, deco slots, and maybe even an entire Naga Kuga armor piece. Speed eating, critical element, both of them are only level one, which is really unfortunate because I want to try a critical element build at some point as well. Especially maybe an ice build, so ice attack would be nicer than speed eating, and then obviously a higher level of critical element. Right. Um, next up, we've got thunder resistance and leap of faith. Leap of faith. 
I'm really bad at Leap of Faith. I'm bad at doing it the way it's meant to be, which is away from the monster. I'm bad at doing it towards the monster. I'm just bad at Leap of Faith, and I don't think I'm going to use this anytime soon. I could learn, obviously, I could practice, but to be honest, I don't think it's worth my time. I think I could use that time better. Um... <laughs> Getting a, getting a better talisman in, effectively. Not going to use it. It is an interesting skill, certainly an interesting skill. Could um, could be great for certain types of bosses where you don't want to try and turn around or you want to like make progress towards the boss if you need to stay close. I don't think I'm going to be using it, um, but that's just me. Maybe, maybe I get proven wrong. We'll see. It is up in the comment if you think Leap of Faith is the best ability and tell me why. All right, Dragon Attack, Botanist, no slots. It throws straight away. I'm never gonna use it. Resentment. I don't hate resentment, but I do hate this talisman because it only has one skill. It only has level one of it, and it only has two level one deco slots. Total garbage. Not gonna use it. Ooh, I really like this one. I really, really like this one. So, level two wide range on my longsword bolt. It sounds weird, right? But just for the the handiness of being able to buff your teammates when you when you do stuff, right? Uh, for group play, I might even switch onto this one rather than my quick sheath three and then take out one of my normal decos and put in a quick sheath deco. Um, it mean I, it'll mean I lose attack boost, but it'll mean I can wide range for the party and that's that's always helpful. Like Sure, you're the big DPS guy, you got your longsword, you're the anime slasher that cuts into things and it does all the work. No, you're not. You can also support the team. Wide range is underrated, and honestly, don't sleep on this talisman. I think it could be handy in group play. Just my opinion. Let me know if you think I'm wrong. Ice attack, resuscitate. No slots. Get out of here. Water attack, dragon attack, a single slot. Once again, when are you going to combine those attack types? Probably never, so... Once again, not interested. Item Prolonger, Dragon Resistance, not for me. Simple as that, just not going to use it. Blight Resistance, Evade Extender, and a level 2 slot. Once again, we've got the Evade Extender. Um, bummer that it isn't the blight resistance i mean blight resistance is handy don't get me wrong but it, it could be a better ability weakness exploit would be lovely on that um quick sheath would be amazing on this obviously so yeah once again evade extender quite a fun ability really do like it not for me this time fingers crossed we're getting into another red one one of those tasty tasty rarity seven let's see what we got the level three deck is lots nice but the rest. I, I don't play Charge Blade or Switch Axe. Yeah, that's a me problem, I know. But also, if we were going to get Rapid Morph, can't we get two or three levels in it? Please, game. Thank you. Um, don't hate it. Don't love it. Probably not going to use it. Bludgeoner, Blight Resistance. There is a Bludgeoner Longsword Bolt. I could maybe keep that around, but I'm sure I could get a better Bludgeoner Talisman than this. Uh, good start, though. Good start. Stamina Thief God... Single deco slot, not for me. Nothing I want to see on a on a talisman. Another level seven. Heartbreaker recoil down. You know that could be good for a bowgun build. And I don't play bowgun. I'm not very good at it. I'm I'm pretty new to the monster hunter scene. I have to be honest. I'm really really loving it. Um, I'm loving theory crafting builds. I'm loving um, optimizing all of the skills. I really enjoy that part of the game, but I need to learn more about the weapons. I do not know much about the weapons. I'm a longsword main. I've messed around with dual blades a little bit. I've messed around with the bow a little bit. Um, but aside from that, don't really know much. That said, recoil down and part breaker could be great on a on a bowgun build, especially with that uh, level two deco slot. Could be really handy. Think I'm going to keep this one. Definitely think I'm going to keep it just in case I get into a bowgun with Monster Hunter Eyes in this version of Monster Hunter. Right, earplugs, water attack. Maybe I'll make a water attack build, maybe, but that's a big maybe. <laughs> so, 
I know I said I want to use the other blast attack talisman for the Magnum Merlot Longsword build, but quick sheath three on a talisman is like the dream for a longsword main. You just don't need to use quick sheath decos, and quick sheath decos take up a level two deco slot, which is obviously kind of like hard to get. You really don't get a lot of those on your on your armor pieces. So this is amazing. You've got three level three decoration slots saved by getting this talisman, and you're adding one to blast attack. All you got to do is put in two level one decorations and you got a full blast attack build. This is really good. I'm very happy with this. I'm a bit bummed that it doesn't have a decoration slot, but I will 100% probably be using this in my uh, in my build until I get that god roll. So very, very happy about this. It's super, super exciting to get three levels of quick sheath on a single talisman. You love to see that. Not even a rarity seven, right? Pretty good. Pretty happy about it. All right, let's get on to the next two. High hopes. Fingers crossed. Give me luck, wish me luck. Comment right below, good luck for this roll. <laughs> Kidding, you really don't have to. <laughs> Do whatever you want, don't listen to me. Affinity sliding, fire attack, great deco slots, but nothing special. I scammed you. I scammed you. Sorry. Retract that comment. Hunger resistance, divine blessing, level 3 slot. Divine blessing is a great ability, um, especially if you, like me, get punished by some monsters. Divine blessing can really save your butt a lot. Hunger Resistance is a, it's, it's a nice to have, I think we could get better talismans in this 100%, so I'm not going to be too focused on that. Carving Pro Sleep Attack, yeah, get out of here. Agitator 2, not bad, pretty bad talisman overall though, doesn't have a second skill, doesn't have more slots. Ooh. I like this a lot, I like this a lot. Free earplugs, quick sheath two, which once again we've established is amazing for longsword, and a level three decoration slot. Level three decoration slots on your talisman are going to become staple later on. I feel I might be wrong, I might be misunderstanding the mechanics slightly, but I think having a level three deco on your um, talisman is going to be so important to really squeeze like the the utmost out of your build. Um, am I thinking this is going to be a talisman that achieves like top tier build capability? Maybe not, but this is a good start. I really like this one. Earplugs is a fun little ability to have on the side with it. And I could see trying this out. I could really see trying this one out. So this one's Garden Geologist. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to skip the next red one. I'm going to leave it for last. Sounds like a weird decision, but I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go up and around. Ooh, we got a weakness exploit. Weakness exploit's really nice. This paired with the, um, the belt, the... Elytra belt, skew Elytra, is there? I, don't, I don't know exactly what that belt is called, but there's a weakness exploit belt that gives you two levels of weakness exploit. Pair it up with this talisman, you've got the full three weakness exploit and you don't have to do anything else to get it. So you can then uh, configure your build without needing a second armor piece for it. Really excited about that because I believe you cannot get decorations for weakness exploit. I think it can only be on your armor. And I think it's really exciting that uh, you get talismans with it. I've got a few that have it already, but this one's also pretty cool. Probably gonna keep it around. Razor shop, no slots, get out of here. Botanist, speed sharpening, sharpening, one slot. Not too handy. That leaves us with one rarity seven. Is this the one? Is this the one? <laughs> I really hope so. I really hope so. I really hope so. Fingers crossed. Let's hit it. This is the end of the talisman unboxing the pack opening the whatever you want to call it of monster hunter rise i think this is a great mechanic i think it's really fun i hope you guys enjoy watching it and let's see what this final one is it is what it is <laughs> Let's break it down, because we haven't seen Fortify yet today. Fortify is a cool skill, um, if you're bad at the game like me. <laughs> the problem is, it incentivizes the wrong behavior. You have to faint to <laughs> trigger Fortify, which means it's a really bad idea in group play, because if you faint, it affects the entire team, but only buffs you. Think that through. That is not good. In solo play against a really, really tough opponent, Fortify can be a good skill. The level 3 deco slot with the two ones on the side is pretty nice. Happy about that. 
Ice resistance is only level one and it's only ice resistance. It's a bit of a bummer. Um, yeah, but overall, I don't think this is a good talisman. I don't see myself using it and it's probably going to get melded into a fresh talisman at some point. Guys, that was it. That's the end of the talismans. All 50 of them. This is going to be like one of the staple activities of Monster Hunter for the foreseeable future is hunting for that perfect, perfect talisman. Let me know what you guys are getting. Let me know what your god rolls have been. Tell me how long it took you to get them. Tell me how many of these full stacks of 50 you had to do to get what you were looking for. I hope you guys enjoyed and take care of yourselves. Enjoy your hunts and see you soon.